In just one year, 2023, China poured over $500 billion into its tech sector. That's not a typo. That's more than the entire GDP of countries like Norway or Austria spent in a single year just on technology. It's like if someone decided to build a dozen Silicon Valleys all at once. Now, compare that to the United States. The CHIPS Act, which was supposed to be America's big move in the tech race, committed $52 billion. Once, not yearly. That means China is outspending the U.S. by nearly 10 times year after year. So here's the big question. Is the U.S. already losing the tech war without even realizing it? This isn't just about gadgets or apps. This is about who controls the next generation of chips, artificial intelligence, and clean energy. It's about economic power, global influence, and even military edge. And right now, China seems to be playing chess, while America is still picking out pieces. Let's rewind and ask, how did China get this far ahead and so fast? To understand how China got here, you have to look at how they plan. While most countries deal with election cycles and changing policies, China follows long-term blueprints called five-year plans. These aren't vague ideas. They're step-by-step -step strategies backed by the full weight of the government. One of the boldest plans was made in China 2025. The goal? Dominate 10 high-tech industries, from artificial intelligence to robotics, semiconductors, and green energy. And it's not just talk. The Chinese government doesn't wait for the private sector to figure it out. It funds companies, builds factories, and even creates entire tech cities to meet its goals. Think of Shenzhen, once a fishing village, now a hardware empire. The government helped turn it into China's Silicon Valley, but with a twist, a close partnership between the state and corporations. While Silicon Valley is fueled by private investors, risky bets, and startup culture, China takes a more coordinated approach. The government identifies the goal, and the companies follow. Here's a powerful example. SMIC, China's biggest chip maker. Despite being hit with U.S. sanctions, SMIC managed to develop 7 nanometer chips, the same cutting-edge level as giants like TSMC. They did this with fewer resources and less access to Western tools. That's like racing in the Olympics with one leg tied and still finishing near the top. The contrast is sharp. In the U.S., innovation often starts in a garage with a few people and a dream. In China, it starts with a national mission, a flood of investment, and a clear deadline. This methodical buildup has now put China in a position to start pulling ahead in some of the world's most critical tech sectors. Now let's talk about where China isn't just catching up, but leapfrogging. Start with semiconductors, the tiny chips that power everything from smartphones to fighter jets. These chips rely on rare earth minerals, and China controls about 70% of the global supply. That's like owning most of the world's oil during the Industrial Revolution. If chips are the new oil, then China is OPEC and Exxon combined. Next, electric vehicles and batteries. You've probably heard of BYD, China's electric car giant. In 2023, they actually sold more EVs than Tesla. That's a big deal. And when it comes to the batteries inside those cars, China's cattle doesn't just lead. It dominates, supplying nearly one-third of the world's EV batteries. If the EV boom is a gold rush, cattle is selling all the shovels. Then there's artificial intelligence, the brains behind smart assistant surveillance self-driving cars, and more. While the U.S. is cutting research grants to key science agencies like the NSF, China is doubling down, pouring over $2.1 billion into AI industrial parks. Imagine cities built just for AI development, with labs, factories, and universities working side by side. So what happens if China ends up controlling 80% of solar panels, chips, and EV batteries? It's not just about tech, it's about power. Power to shape supply chains, set prices, and decide who gets what. In short, if technology is the battlefield of the future, China's already building the tanks, the roads, and even the rules of engagement. All this isn't happening in some faraway policy room, it's already hitting American companies where it hurts. Take Apple, for example. With tensions rising, Apple started shifting some of its supply chain to India. But here's the catch. Many of the parts still come from China. So even when Apple tries to leave, it's like trying to move out of a house but still needing to borrow the kitchen. Then there's NVIDIA, one of the biggest names in AI chips. After the United States banned high-end chip exports to China, NVIDIA lost an estimated $5 billion in sales. Meanwhile, Huawei, which many thought was crippled by U.S. sanctions, came back swinging. It's now making its own AI chips, directly competing with NVIDIA. Even Tesla is feeling it. One executive admitted, we can't compete on battery costs without China. Think about that. 
the world's most famous electric car company is saying it's dependent on its biggest rival to stay in the game. This isn't just business, it's survival. U.S. firms are caught in a tough spot. Cut ties with China, and they lose access to critical parts and massive markets. Stay in, and they risk being outpaced or blocked by their own government's policies. The pressure is on, and it's starting to show cracks. Faced with China's rapid rise, the U.S. isn't just standing by, it's fighting back. But the question is, are these moves bold enough or just band-aids? Let's start with the CHIPS Act. The U.S. set aside $52 billion to boost domestic chip production. Sounds huge, right? But compare that to TSMC's Arizona plant, just one factory. That alone costs $40 billion. So $52 billion for an entire industry? That's like trying to fill a swimming pool with a coffee mug. Then there are the export bans. The United States has blocked companies like NVIDIA and AMD from selling their most advanced chips to China. It's a clear message. You can't use our tools to beat us. But China has responded fast. Huawei's new chip rollout proves that bans don't always stop innovation. Sometimes they accelerate it. On the diplomatic front, the United States is trying to rally allies. For example, Washington convinced the Netherlands to block ASML, a company that makes critical machines for chip production, from selling to China. But these deals aren't always stable. European countries are also worried about losing their own market share in China. And then comes the backlash at home. Some economists warn that tariffs on Chinese tech could fuel inflation. Elon Musk even called it a tech iron curtain, warning that over-isolation could backfire pushing China to build an entirely separate system that's even harder to compete with. So is the U.S. being smart or just scared? Is it building a future strategy or just reacting to the present? That's the question the world is watching. The tech race between the U.S. and China isn't just their fight anymore. It's becoming a global chessboard, and every country is being forced to pick a side or find a clever way to play both. Let's start with Europe. The European Union has launched its own $47 billion chip subsidy program. On the surface, it looks like they're trying to keep up with the U.S. and reduce their reliance on Asian supply chains. But behind closed doors, they're walking a tightrope, trying not to anger China, one of their biggest trading partners, while still aligning with U.S. export bans. It's like being asked to dance with two partners at once, without stepping on either's toes. Then there's the China Plus One strategy especially in places like India and Southeast Asia. These countries are welcoming companies that want to move some operations out of China, but they aren't cutting ties with China either. India, for example, is still doing business with Huawei, even as it courts American tech investors. It's hedging its bets like a gambler splitting chips across two tables. Even Saudi Arabia is playing the game. While the U.S. warns about Chinese tech dominance, Saudi is buying Huawei's AI systems to modernize its economy. For them, the priority isn't geopolitics, it's getting the best tools, fast. And then there's Africa. Despite U.S. efforts to push Western alternatives, 60% of the continent's telecom infrastructure is powered by Chinese 5G networks. Why? Because it's cheap, fast, and already available. For many African nations, the question isn't should we trust China? Around the world, governments are quietly making their choices, not just based on loyalty, but on who delivers. And right now, more and more are betting on Beijing. Let's fast forward to the year 2030. Imagine a world where China wins the tech race. What does that actually look like? First, China wouldn't just make the gadgets. We'd be using their standards, their platforms, and their systems. Instead of Google setting the rules for the internet, it could be Huawei or Baidu. Think about your phone, your car, your smart home, all running on Chinese-built systems. China is already leading in sixth-generation patents. If it dominates sixth generation like it did with fifth generation, the backbone of future communication could be made in China. Even how money moves could change. If China pushes its digital yuan as an alternative to SWIFT, the system that powers international banking, the United States could lose one of its most powerful tools' financial influence. Now flip the script. What if the U.S. adapts and pulls off a comeback? In this version of 2030, the world might split into two parallel tech ecosystems. Like the Cold War space race, we'd see a new kind of rivalry, one powered by AI, semiconductors, and quantum computing. Western countries might rely on NVIDIA, Intel, and OpenAI. The rest of the world might use Chinese chips, TikTok-like platforms, and chat GPT rivals made in Beijing. Here's a wild card to think about. 
What if China creates an AI model that beats GPT-4 or GPT-5? Would the world start shifting toward Chinese language training data, Chinese ethics, and Chinese information control? The AI you use might no longer reflect your values, but someone else's rules. In short, the battle for 2030 isn't just about who makes what. It's about who shapes the digital future the entire world will live in. Now that you've seen the scale of China's tech rise, the big question is, why should you care? This isn't just about companies battling for profit. It's about who controls the future, your internet, your job, your car, even your wallet. Think about it. If your favorite app suddenly stops working because it's caught in a tech war, or if your country's economy takes a hit because it's behind on green energy tech, or if AI systems around the world are being trained with data from only one country's point of view, that changes your life. And here's the truth. The U.S. is behind. Some say we need a radical shift, something big, like a tech Manhattan project. The original Manhattan project built the atomic bomb in just a few years with total national focus. Now, some experts believe we need that same level of urgency for AI, semiconductors, and clean energy. So here's the question for you. Is the United States doing enough? Or are we sleepwalking into a future where we play by someone else's rules? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Should the United States double down? Partner more with allies or accept a future where China takes the lead? And if you want to go even deeper into this race, subscribe now because part two is coming soon. The AI war we're not ready for.